Hey everyone, Jeff here again for Rhinoco Technology. By far the most common fault that we see here at Rhinoco Technology in the technical support department for IP cameras that have been sent back for repair is a corroded and damaged RJ45 socket caused by water ingress. Now, while this is something that's fairly straightforward to fix, um, it is unfortunately not covered by warranty. Um, replacing the plug, we can typically fix the camera and get it back to the point where everything functions just perfectly well. Obviously, it's a bit of a pain all around though. You've got to go out there, pull the camera down, send it back to us, we replace the plug, we um, verify that everything's working, we send it back out to you, you put it back up again, and then hope that it doesn't get wet and cause the same issue all over again. Now, I think why this is one of the reasons why this is so prevalent out there is because perhaps we haven't really emphasized just how much of a, like how critical it is that this plug stays dry. Okay, so that we get no moisture on it at all. Okay, so we have to put a lot of effort into making sure that this thing stays dry. And in this video, I'm gonna show you, A, I'm gonna show you just how quickly things can head south if you do get moisture in the plug. And then I'm gonna show you um, why that happens, why things head south so quickly, why things corrode so very quickly. And then I'm going to show you how you can prevent it in 99.9% .9 of cases just by doing one simple thing. So without further ado, Let's jump across to our desk camera and I'm going to show you just this camera that I've got here. I'll, I'll show you the corrosion that's in the plug just so that you get an example of what we're talking about here. So as you can kind of see there, if I get it in the middle of the shot, you can see the camera there, the corrosion that we're talking about on the socket. Now you can see that those pins have become blackened and they've started to corrode and actually dissolve. They're dissolving. Okay, so that that's, you know, not going to work. You're either going to have an intermittent fault or it's just going to flat out not work. Now this one's actually probably not too bad. I've seen some that are a lot worse than this. Okay, and just to show you the other end of the connection, this is obviously plugged into at the time. This is the RJ45 patch lead that this was plugged into and you can see the corrosion on those pins there. Essentially, um, again, they're dissolving as well. That side of the pin is dissolving. So, Next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this camera here because obviously that one there is already damaged and I'm going to show you just how quickly this will happen and to do that I'm going to sacrifice this IP camera here and what I'm going to do, so first up, so this is just jump across to the desk camera here. So this is just a, a standard uh, four channel VIP vision recorder. You can see that I'm just powering up via power over ethernet, which we'll go into is um, part of the problem here, or part of the thing that we have to be aware of. Um, and we're running just with a short patch lead into the connector on the camera here. And just to show you that um, this camera is all good right now, you know, hello, all good, working just fine. And I'll jump back to the desk camera and I'll just show you that right now there is zero corrosion on either this, this connector, this uh, RJ45 plug here, or in the socket itself. You can see that the socket there is perfectly clear of corrosion. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just gonna prop this camera up on its side. Now what that's gonna allow me to do is sit the cable up in a nice way so that you can see it for the next step, which is of course, adding a little bit of moisture. So um, this is just plain old tap water, okay? There's nothing special about it, okay? It's just standard tap water. It's in this bottle just to make it slightly easier for this demonstration. But of course, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add a little bit of moisture to the plug. Okay, not really that much, just enough to sort of demonstrate how easy, easily this happens and how little moisture it takes and how quickly it happens. Okay, while we leave that, okay, to um, just, I suppose, sit in the water there, sit in the moisture for a little bit. I'm gonna to talk to you about why this happens. And now you've probably already guessed, you know, it's related to power over ethernet or PoE. So why does it happen though? Why is it that PoE makes this corrode so very quickly? And most of the reason for that is uh, the fact that PoE runs a much higher voltage than you're probably used to for anything else DC, okay? So sure you've got your, you know, your 230, 240 volt mains outlet, AC, um, but other than that, like other than, than PoE, unless you're exposed to telecommunications stuff, typically um, the highest DC voltage you'll see around the place most of the time is 12 volts DC. And the fact that 
Uh, PoE runs a voltage that's much, much higher, sort of around about the level of uh, 50 volts. It makes a massive, massive difference to the speed at which things corrode, okay? And the fact that it's DC makes a big difference as well. So I'm just gonna jump across to a PC here and just go over basically what I was talking about with power over ethernet. So um, obviously we're sending power to the camera over the ethernet cable. And if we come down here and we check out 802.3AT, um, which is what the standard that most of our recorders support and what our cameras support, you'll see that we have a voltage of 50 to 57 volts. Now the reason for such a high voltage is because the cable, uh, Cat5 or Cat6 cable is very skinny and we wanna be able to send you know, up to 25.5 um, watts across that cable. Um, and yeah, the, really, really, the only way that we can achieve that is by having the voltage quite high. That's normally not a problem. It's only an issue when uh, electrolytic corrosion comes to town. So electrolytic corrosion. Electrolytic corrosion is a process of accelerated corrosion. In this process, a metallic surface is continuously corroded by other metal it is in contact with due to an electrolyte and the flow of an electric current between two metals caused from an external source of electromotive force. So we go through that again. Uh, in this process, a metallic surface, i.e. the RJ45 socket on the camera, is continuously corroded by other metal it is in contact with, i.e. the RJ45 plug, uh, due to an electrolyte and the flow of an electrical current. An electrolyte, the water that we've just added, and the flow of an electrical current, the power over ethernet, which is running on our Cat5 or Cat6 cable. Um, the, this form of corrosion causes widespread damage to critical equipment and ways, of, ways and means of monitoring and controlling and preventing this corrosive damage have been developed and implemented. Well, in our case, it's actually a very simple fix. Okay, so you've probably noticed that in every, every camera, um, any camera, any IP camera that comes from Rhinoco Technology, they all come with this little bag and this little bag contains what is uh, a little seal or a shield or, or, you know, just whatever you want to call it really. But basically what this does is it goes over the ends of our Cat6 or Cat5 or Cat6 and on our um, RJ45 plug and it basically seals the elements. It connects to the edge of the camera and it seals out from the elements. So if I bring this other camera up that we were talking about previously, you'll notice that obviously this camera has a notch on the end of it. And that's what this is actually designed to slide onto. If I can find the right spot for it here. There we go. It's designed to slide on there as a bayonet fit. Now, how does that connect to your Cat5, Cat6, RJ, 45 termination. Well, what you want to do before you terminate the cable, okay, is we need to, we slide on this first piece here. What I'll do is I'll actually just, I'll jump across to the desk camera. I'll push this out of the way for the time being over that way, just to get that out of the way. And we'll go through how to fit these connectors. So first thing you want to do, okay, before we terminate the cable, okay, you're not going to be able to do this after we terminate the cable. We put on the base, okay, which has these screw threads here that slides over the top. The second thing that we wanna do is we wanna slide over this little gasket ring here. Make sure that you have, it's a bit hard to see there, but there's a, there's a little notch in one end of the connect, in one end of the, uh, the seal here. We want that notch to point forwards, okay? So there's a flat end at the base and we have a notch here. We want the notch, notched end to go over and point towards where our RJ45 plug is going to be. Okay, once that's on there, we then simply slide the next piece over the top and we won't screw that on there now, but just to, just to show you, that's, that's how all the pieces go together, okay? You just need to make sure that obviously this little gasket piece does slide up inside the, uh, the piece with all the teeth here, which we're gonna crush over the top or close over the top as a gland um, by screwing this down. So um, just to show you how that looks, on an actual RJ45 termination. So we've got another one here. So this slides up over the top and then this obviously we still need this little gasket in there. Before we actually tighten this up though, what you're going to need to do is connect it to the camera. 
So before we connect it to the camera though, there's actually one more piece that we need to add and that's this little guy here which is quite critical. It's actually a little seal and this piece fits on the camera end of the bayonet fitting. So this is going to slide over the top here and we're going to make sure that it's over the top and it's not twisted. So you can see now that we have that, that seal the whole way around. You can see it there, we've got that rubber seal, silicon rubber seal the whole way around. So now that that's on the camera, we can go back to our RJ45 socket on the end of our cable and we're gonna connect the two together. Okay, before we tighten anything up, we're gonna connect the two together. Make sure you have positive engagement there. And then what's gonna happen next is this piece is gonna slide up on top and we're going to bayonet over the top. And then we're gonna slide in our little seal, which should hopefully go on easier than this one is going on right now. Um, and we just wanna make sure that we don't get any of the teeth. We don't catch any of the teeth and that it's, it's, it is in there in the correct spot. And then the last thing to do is just to come over the top with this little screw piece here and tighten it up. And once that's done, as long as our bayonet fitting is on there tight, which that is there now, we have a sealed connector, okay? Which is then IP rated um, to the point where we've, we've actually tested these underwater and they still work just fine. So um, while you do need to probably make sure that they're not exposed to the sun, they don't get damaged um, through getting, being crushed or or you know, have, I suppose, undue exposure to um, running water or jets or things like that, this will solve 99%, 99.9% of the problems that we run into that we see. Okay, so yeah, I told you that was really simple. There's only one, one other thing that I think that me personally, I like to do if I'm gonna install these, and that's just to put a small piece of tape over the top of this just so that it can't possibly come undone. So we just take the piece of tape, either duct tape in this case, or it could be just as easily be insulation tape, wrap it over the top. And now there's no way that this can untwist. Okay, that's, it's gonna stay in that position. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that's it. That's, that's as easy it is to do that. The only other thing I might add, okay, once this is in, if you can, stick it into a wall cavity or something like that, that's great. Um, somewhere where it's going to be protected from the sun and it's not gonna be exposed. But if you can't do that, let's say you're mounting to brickwork or something like that, what you should really be doing is inserting it in a housing. So I'm gonna jump back across to the PC now and I'll just show you the housings that I was, I was referring to, into a housing or into a back box. Um, sort of depends on what you wanna call it, junction box, something like this. One of these units here, for instance, for this um, bullet camera that I'm talking to you about now. Um, essentially, it's this unit itself is also waterproof, so um, it sort of gives you that extra layer of security, but uh, it's really just any, any back box that's going to protect the uh, connector and protect the cover, just so that it's not exposed to the sun or any undue, you know, running water or hoses or anything like that. Okay, so uh, there's one last thing left to do, obviously, and that is to show you the damage that has been caused to this connector just while we've been waiting. So uh, it's actually looking pretty, pretty good without me actually doing anything here. So we're gonna jump across to the desk camera again, just so I can show you. You can actually see it's actually warm. It's hard to display that on camera, but it's quite warm. And you can probably even see the bubbles going on there. That's actually electrolysis happening as we watch. So that's, that's uh, the water that's in there being separated into hydrogen and oxygen. And uh, yeah, you can see that we've already got that metal that's starting, like I mentioned before, it was getting dissolved out. It's all the way around the connector and you can see it up the top here. So I'm just gonna disconnect that now. And wow, you can see the, the black on the, on the RJ45 socket there. And if you wanna just take a Take a look inside this plug. Look at how black that is. If it wants to focus, come on camera. There we go. Take a look at how much corrosion's happened just in that short period of time. Just to uh, drain some of that water out of there. You can see that it's, it's really, they're dissolving. 
That's why you really, 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 really need to make sure that these things are waterproof. So yeah, hopefully that's, that's been a, a good indication of just how quickly this happens, right? How, how little it takes for something to start corroding. Um, one final thing that I probably touch on, if you are, for whatever reason, just using straight um, patch leads that are already pre-terminated and that there is, there is no way of fitting this bag that comes with the camera, um, make sure that you find some other way of waterproofing it, okay? One thing I've recommended in the past is self-amalgamating tape. You can buy that from hardware stores and electrical wholesalers and things like that. At that point, really, it would connect and then you would wrap the self-amalgamating tape from this side of the cable, or on the camera side, the whole way around to get to the other side of your, your patch lead. And then that will also give you a reasonably good seal. After you do that, you still wanna be putting it into a junction box, like I was displaying um, as you would with these standard units here. Anyway, I hope that video has been helpful and, and eye-opening and you, it's, it's been useful and that you've learned something with um, just, just how quickly these things corrode and how, how quickly, like I said, it can go south. And how just one easy, one simple fix um, can really um, improve the reliability of your jobs no end. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, comments, feel free to leave them below. And yeah, have a great day.